Hey everybody and welcome to the fourth issue of Ye Old Video Game Magazine and this time I have issue number 110 of Electronic Gaming Monthly and as you can see on the cover it features prominently Metal Gear Solid. Uh, the game had not come out yet and it says we show you more of the game than you've ever seen before ten pages of new info and I tell you all of the screenshots are smaller than this little barcode right here also first Dreamcast game screens and it features N64, PlayStation, Dreamcast, Saturn 16-bit handhelds and arcade okay so let's just dive right in because I have done this four times now and I ran out of time every single time so turn it open and the first thing you see and very surprisingly it is not an ad for a sports game it is Tomba or Tumba Tomba for the PlayStation 1 does anybody know the definitive pronunciation of the title of that game besides the people that made it can somebody can somebody verify what the pronunciation of that game is? Also, I've never played it and it looks kind of cool. Anybody have any uh, opinions about this? Because um, I'm, 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 I'm kind of interested in playing it. <clears throat> Next page is yet another ad for Bomberman Hero. And I can't tell what kind of game this is. Um, I mean, I know it's a Bomberman game. But it looks like it might be a platformer, and this was for the N64, and there is the get in or get out uh, slogan that they used for uh, a little bit there. Now we got a letter from the editor here, um, and then here is a teaser ad for Turok 2 for the N64. And here's an ad for uh, Fighting Force 64. Now, as I understand it, Fighting Force was initially conceived as Streets of Rage 4, a 3D Streets of Rage, and I don't know if that is true, but I did read that. Now, if anybody can verify that, I would like to know. Uh, this game gets trashed a lot by a lot of people online, but I actually liked the PlayStation version of Fighting Force. Um, you can pull objects off of the walls and, and use them as uh, weapons. That was pretty cool. I liked that. Here's an ad for the fifth element. There's a lot of sideways ads in this magazine. This, this, this magazine has a very strange layout. You'll see as I go through the pages. Uh, this is for the PlayStation. Here's the table of contents, which look kind of messy and sloppy. And then this is also, this is an, not an ad. This is part of the table of contents. This artwork right here. It's about uh, video game designers that are of the female persuasion. And uh, here's an ad for an RC racer. RC racer, yes, okay. For the uh, PlayStation, that appears. And then here is uh, Duke Nukem Time to Kill for PlayStation. Um, two page ad. Got some letters here, and for some reason there's an ad for uh, Levi's denim jeans in a video game magazine. Don't understand what that's doing there, but you know, the ads that are in video game magazines now are getting less video game centric and turning more into army recruitment centers. I don't really like seeing that, but uh, what are you going to do? They, they pay the bills, right? And in the letters, somebody asks about where one of the editors went. The editor was uh, Kelly Rickard. And uh, the answer to that was he left to take care of things in his personal life and we wish him well, which translates to his uh, crystal meth addiction got him fired from the magazine. And he was also, uh, he also worked for Game Fan uh, for a while. He was Kay Lee in Game Fan Magazine. And here's an ad for Tales of Destiny for the uh, PlayStation. Some reader artwork. There's Geese Howard, one of my favorite characters. And we got an uh, electronics boutique ad for uh, ebworld.com. Um, yeah, I don't think anybody would ever really get that tattooed on their body, but 
you never know some people are crazy and here is a PlayStation game called the War Games Defcon 1 and here is an article about the graphic violence of video games featuring heavily uh, thrill kill you'll be seeing some more thrill kill in this uh, issue of this magazine and uh, this funky thick piece of uh, different type of uh, paper here was for subscribers only it was called the sushi x files and uh, I didn't I wasn't a subscriber at the time but um, I got this at a, a used uh, uh, bookstore and um, this was still in there it wasn't pulled out and on the other side it has a bunch of pictures a little of a little movie that the editors made with the Game Boy camera where they decapitate one of their buddies with a frisbee uh, some shit about E3 and um, this is about the announcement of uh, Paramount getting the movie rights to Tomb Raider it hadn't been cast yet they had just signed the dotted line that they were going to be making the movie an ad for um, Dead Ball Zone uh, some sort of uh, sports game with violence in it kinda like I guess Blitz, I don't know I have no idea. It's for the PlayStation. Again, you got two pages of Tomb Raider 3 here. Two page ad for Tomb Raider 3 and these uh, janky, jagged polygons are pretty much what the game looks like. And uh, here's some fun stuff here. We got an old picture of Nolan Bushnell here with his buddy Chuck E. Cheese. He was the founder of Atari, not Chuck E. Cheese, but Nolan Bushnell. He founded Atari and he founded Chuck E. Cheese. And he ended up selling both companies. He sold controlling stock to uh, um, of Atari to uh, Time Warner and once Time Warner took over Atari ended up kind of changing completely altogether. And uh, Chuck E. Cheese was bought out by a different company that was uh, similar in, in style, like a, a pizza chain that had arcade games. And uh, here's a, a thing that was in Japan only. This is some sort of, um, it's like a Tamagotchi, but it was for the Nintendo 64 uh, called Pikachu in Your Pocket, but this is the Hello Kitty version, which uh, it, that sounds very dirty, Pikachu in Your Pocket. And uh, here we got a big close-up picture of uh, Shigeru Miyamoto's black tooth. Isn't that something? That should be like in Smash Brothers. His black tooth should be a, 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 like a final boss or something. And over here we got the, um, this is the, the PlayStation uh, Netyarose system that was available in Japan. It was some sort of like developing kit for uh, uh, independent developers, I think. I'm not really sure exactly what it was used for. I could read that, but I don't feel like doing it, and plus it would take up too much time. So, uh, we'll look at this advertisement for Pocket Fighter, which is a great game, and it, you, you all should pick it up because it's a wonderful game. It's very fun. Uh, a lot of fun to play. And, uh, there's a top 20 from 98. This was in 98. And here's a great ad for uh, Thunder Force 5, perfect system for the uh, PlayStation. Um, if uh, you don't have the Saturn version and it, you can't play the Saturn version for some reason, being that you like, either you don't have a Saturn or you can't play imports, then you should get this one because uh, it's it's a good port. It's actually got increased difficulty. It has a new um, opening cinematic and uh, those are the main differences from the Saturn version. I would recommend getting both if you are able to. Uh, yes, uh, very good game. Very awesome music. Very very good uh, side-scrolling shooting. Uh, it kicks ass. And uh, here's an ad for something called Ge Elemental Gear Bolt, which appears to be a gun con game. I've never, never played this, and I don't know anything about it. But it looks moderately interesting. 
That was uh, another one of those long sideways ads. This was uh, for Spyro the Dragon, as you can see. Um, just move right along. Vigilante 8. Some uh, destruction derby type game, right? I, I, I don't know because I don't play games like that. Wipeout 64. Um, this is a preview of Wipeout 64. Uh, I already stated my opinions about that game in my uh, N64 collection video. If you haven't checked that out, please do. Uh, here's an ad for Devil Dice, uh, which looks pretty cool. I would actually like to play this. Uh, it looks interesting. Madden NFL 99 for N N64 because, of course, you know, I can't go through this magazine without seeing 750,000 ads for fucking football games. Or basketball games, or hockey games, or racing games, or first person fucking shooters. And then here's this ad for uh, Heart of Darkness. I have no idea what this is. It looks relatively interesting. It looks kind of like some kind of LucasArts type stuff, but I really don't know what this is. Don't know. I have no idea. I've never heard of it before. GT64, and. Uh, I'm not sure if that has any relation to Gran Turismo on PlayStation, but it doesn't seem like it would. But you never know. Uh, what do we got here? There's an ad for the BMG Music Services. Anybody remember subscribing to one of these? 12 CDs for one to, for the price of one with nothing more to buy ever. That is a lie. You got caught into this system and you could not get out. And look at this shit music that was available. Uh, like Limp Biscuit, Days of the New, Everclear. Who gives a rat's ass? Maya? Come on, man. I worked at a record store at the time, so I was like bombarded with a lot of people like asking for these bands and having to listen to that music all the time. It was really, really bad. Bomberman Hero Preview Deadly Arts. This is for N64, and it looks like a really terrible fighting game, so I might be interested in owning that because I love myself some really terrible fighting games. There's a Grand Prix game, um, Driving in a Straight Line. Is that what Grand Prix, or not Grand Prix, but F1, for Formula One is, is like driving in a straight line, right? Right? I don't really know. Um. Here's some advertisement for something called Iggy's Wrecking Balls for the N64. Don't know what kind of game this is. It looks sort of like a, a puzzle-y, platform-y type of thing from the screenshots, but I can't really tell. Here's the box. And uh, some N64 previews like Top Gear Overdrive, Twisted Edge Snowboarding, Winback, Survivor Day 1, and Jet Force Gemini. An ad for NFL Blitz, where there's a dude on a box, a Wheaties type box, eating a bowl of uh, nails because, you know, people eat nails if they're tough. Uh, and um, here's a preview for Parasite Eve on PlayStation. Very popular game, I've never played it. Colony Wars Vengeance preview. And an uh, ad for a PlayStation game called. Circuit Breakers, some sort of uh, off-road racing, looks like. I don't know. Uh, Two-page ad for Parasite Eve, the cinematic RPG. No, I didn't just to give you the finger. That was just how I did that. So the thing about Wild 9, and then uh, Reddit, uh, Command and Conquer Red Alert Retaliation for the PlayStation. Uh, did Rob Liefeld design this gun? This is called ODT. It was for the PlayStation. Here's an ad for Jersey Devil, a game I just recently picked up, and this is not the ads that I remember. I don't remember him disassembling a bicycle, but I remember the ad being more or less the the cover of the game, and uh, the most of it being black, and then having the screenshots and some some copy about what the game was going to be, but nothing like this. Then there's Duke Nukem Time to Kill preview, and over here there's an ad for uh, Alien Resurrection, the game, and it says, do this fall, and it has a little sonogram, get it? That's hilarious, what a great joke. Okay, 
Here's Medieval, a preview of Medieval for the PlayStation, and uh, they spelled it wrong, but uh, I, I um, recently made a purchase on the PlayStation Network that I regret, and I probably should have got this instead. Uh, what I did get was the Japanese version of um, the Neo Geo Double Dragon, but it was the PlayStation version. And uh, I thought it was going to be the arcade version, and it wasn't. So uh, it's actually different and a little confusing and not that good. But I do like bad fighting games. I just I, I would have rather have had something else in hindsight. Something called Heart of Darkness. And it says, yep, it's finally finished on there. Colony War Vengeance advertisement. It's an ad for um, NFL Extreme. I guess this is like the... Uh, uh, answer to blitz I suppose and uh, you can just punch people it looks like and uh, yeah it says you can get away with anything uh, preview for thrill kill which as we all know never came out the fifth element and uh, here's an ad for Kagero Deception 2 the sequel to Tecmo's award-winning 3D trap battle game trap battle game Oh, Tecmo's Deception. Okay, I get it. I gotcha. I understand. I get it. Um, Diabolical Adventures of Tobu. No idea what the hell that is. Ros Roscoe McQueen. Power Soccer 98 for PlayStation. Tenchu Stealth Assassins. I have this game, but it's the Japanese version, and the camera is absolutely horrible. Um, something called Vermin. Dead in the Water. I have no idea what either of these games are. Some sideways ad for something called Trap Gunner, which was for the PlayStation, and I'm not sure what kind of game this is. NASCAR 99, who gives a shit about NASCAR? Really, it's so... Uh, uh, I don't want to go there. Test Drive Off-Road 2, this weird one-handed controller. I used to see these all the time used, and uh, I never really understood the purpose of this. Unless you had only one hand, then that makes sense. This was for N64, it's for PlayStation, and they had it for, for the PC. It was made by Interact. This is an IDOS ad for several different games. We got Tomb Raider 3, Ninja, Omicron, and Fighting Force 64. Omicron was on Dreamcast, and it's some weird sci-fi game with David Bowie in it. And uh, we got Dead Ball Zone, I have no idea. It's uh, some sort of basketball, looks like. Futuristic basketball. I don't know. Something called Assault. That's very uh, basic titling. Um, WCW NWO Revenge exclusively for the N64 but not forever. They, they did release this on the uh, PlayStation and uh, yeah there's some, there's some preview for Devil Dice and ODT and then here is something called the Intenson Inten, I have no idea it looks like some sort of like a portable commode or a bedpan and it's actually a vibrating chair with speakers in it and um, so like you can have your balls tickled while you're playing your game and if you're a girl you can uh, have it masturbate you I suppose I don't know there were a lot of weird things peripherals and accessories at, at this point in time for uh, video games and uh, that was one of them Activision Classics that's pretty cool Tenchu Busted Groove and NFL Blitz some games from Chemco on the N64 and uh, some more PlayStation previews and we got some soccer game Cooler World Trap Gunner Starcon and Spice World, which I'm actually looking for. Don't make fun of me. Don't judge me. I do want this game for some reason. Uh, this is an ad for Wild 9. It's actually got pretty good design for once. Some, a lot of these ads look like shit, but this one actually is appealing. This looks like something that will grab somebody's attention. 
Uh, here is a preview for the Saturn version of uh, Symphony of the Night, it's, uh, known as Dracula X, Nocturne in the Moonlight in Japan. It was the sequel to Dracula X, uh, Rondo of Blood. And if you have the uh, uh, PSP um, Castlevania Chronicles, uh, this is unlockable on the uh, disc. All of the Saturn exclusive stuff is available on that game, on that version of Symphony of the Night, including the playable Maria and all the, the new stages that they added to the Saturn version. And this was very, very close to coming out in the U.S. It's very close to coming out in the U.S. and they canceled it. Konami did because they didn't think it would be very profitable to release a Saturn game so late in the cycle of the uh, Saturn's lifespan because it was dying very rapidly. And uh, something called Cartia for the uh, PlayStation. It appears to be an RPG as it is published by Atlas. And then there's some arcade stuff. Our, uh, Gauntlet Legends, Soul Calibur, Street Fighter Alpha 3, and Daytona 2. Um, Soul Calibur ended up looking much better on Dreamcast than it did in the arcade, which is a feat. Uh, here is Mega Man Legends on the PlayStation, something I have always wanted. I have never been able to find this. This game is extremely hard for me to find. I wanted to get it for the N64 uh, because I got an N64 pretty late in its lifespan I wanted to uh, get as many games for it that were available just to have them on N64 so I would look like I was uh, you know supporting the system that I, I had pretty much begged for which I was given as a gift and uh, I, 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 as you can see I only have like five games for it still after all these years here's an ad for uh, Thrill Kill and it looks like um, 90's websites for porn because you know you can have to, you can agree or you can back out. And then it just has pictures of the characters in the game, which, as we all know, never came out. And then here we go, 10 pages of Metal Gear Solid. And like I was telling you, those screenshots are so small you can barely even see them, even if I held it up. And it shows you the Dual Shock would be used. And uh, here's an ad for one of the most panned games I think I could ever think of, besides Superman 64, and this is Earthworm Jim 3D. It's a shame that this was the last that we saw of Earthworm Jim uh, for a while, until the HD version came out, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, pick that up if you can on the uh, PlayStation Network. It's not that much money. It's uh, very, very nice to look at. Some racing game for the uh, N64 called, what is this, Arrow Gauge. No idea, I never heard of it. And there we got Chips and Bits Inc. This company was around for such a long time, I have no idea how they stayed in business for so long. I mean, mail order companies, you know, they just, they came and went, but they didn't, and they didn't sell imports, so I don't know what they were doing right to stay alive for so long. Here's some racing game for PlayStation and it has girls with their tops off and a dude with his shorts off for all you gals out there. And it is a motorboat racing game. Okay. So here is a little timeline of uh, Metal Gear uh, up to then, up to that point. And there's the famous ad that would appear on the back of comic books all the time. Let me just bring that a little closer. This was on the back cover of so many comic books. It didn't show you anything really about the game. It just showed you all of the weapons that you could get. And that was a very big selling point for a lot of my friends. Uh, I played it one time only, and I couldn't get past the dogs on the first screen. So I ended up hating that game for years upon years, and um, that is still the case pretty much. Uh, here we go. There's an ad for some game simply called Ninja for the PlayStation. I do remember seeing this in stores at the time. It had rather lousy cover. And it doesn't look very good. And I gotta keep, hurry up here. Uh, here's the ad for, um, not an ad, the article about female game programmers, people who work in uh, the video game industry. And then there's an NFL Quarterback Club 99 advertisement in the middle of this article, continuing. And then there is Gex 64. 
Um, I played Gex a little bit more on my PlayStation and I decided that that game is terrible and I hate it. And that is an educated opinion because I played it. It wasn't going off of uh, advertisements that I saw. Okay, here's the Game Boy Camera. BFD. Um, I have no idea what the hell this is for. And here's the reviews. They did all their uh, reviewers and um, creator wrestlers from uh, WWF. Uh, looks like. And uh, so they reviewed Banjo and Kazooie, Flying Dragon 64, Iggy's Wrecking Balls, um, uh, IS Soccer 98, Virtua Chess 94, WWF Warzone, C the Contra Adventure, look at that, 2.0, wow. Uh, Command and Conquer Red Alert, Crime Killer, IS Soccer Pro 98 on PlayStation, Cartia on PlayStation, they gave it pretty high scores, must be a, a strategy RPG it looks like. Um, baseball something, football something, Pocket Fighter, awesome. Uh, turbo Prop Racing, Water Racing. Uh, War Games Defcon 1, WWF Warzone for the PlayStation, and Shining Force 3 on the Saturn. Look at those grades, they gave it pretty good. And moving right along, we got some sideways crap again, and some cheat codes, and uh, they say. Uh, the end of the magazine here. You need to buy all this crap like this camcorder and Space Ghost Musical Barbecue on CD. And here's the Dreamcast control pad which has a circle button right here instead of the triangle button would, that we're used to. Um, an ad for uh, other Ziff Davis publications. And then here is Gex. Enter the Gecko uh, again but this one is for the PlayStation. Japan Video Games. Let me tell you a very quick story. I uh, called this company up because I was looking for the arcade card for the um, PC Engine. And uh, so I called, right? And the guy answers the phone and he answers like this. Japan Video Games! Like that. I'm not making it up. And uh, I ask, um, uh, um, do you guys have... Uh, uh, the uh, arcade card for the Turbo Duo and he answered no we don't have arcade card you stop calling ya and he hung up on me and I hear that that was pretty typical of that guy um, it, and then down here we got an ad for Radiant Silvergun, Dracula X, all kinds of cool stuff lots of great stuff lots of great stuff imports and then at the very end here is the final insult to any Saturn owners for those of you who cannot find Panzer Dragoon Saga see below so what you do is you cut this face of edge out and then you um, wear it around as a mask and pretend you're playing the game and uh, that's it for this edition of the old video game magazine I hope you enjoyed this Comment, like, subscribe, uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.